Three weeks ago, I didn't know a single thing about designing custom keyboards. Today, I'm holding in my hands a keyboard I designed and built from scratch. In this video, with the help of some free software and today's video sponsor, PCBWay, I'm gonna show you how you too can create your own custom keyboards. And as a beginner to this process myself, I'm gonna share some tips I learned along the way that should make this process so much easier for you. Let's get started. There are several pillars in the world of custom keyboard design. You've got the layout, the PCB or matrix if you're hand wiring, the case, the keycaps, and of course, the firmware. That's way too much to cover in this one video, so today I'm just gonna cover everything up to actually ordering the PCBs. So, to actually get started, before you do anything else, write down a list of features you want your new keyboard to have. Some things you might wanna include could be the layout, the kind of switches and keycaps you want, whether you want it to be wired or wireless, any displays or rotary encoders, RGB underglow, per key lighting, etc. Next, hop on over to your computer and head over to keyboardlayouteditor.com. But before you get too crazy with this tool, I wanna share tip number one. Keycaps aren't as easy to customize as you might think. So it might be a good idea, at least initially, to base your design off an existing keycap set that you like. You could always make your own, but that's outside the scope of this video. Once you're absolutely sure you've got your layout the way you want it, sleep on it for a couple of days just to be safe, and then move on to the next step. To design the schematic and PCB, I'm going to be using KeyCAD. Before doing anything else, tip number two is to use plugins to make this whole process much quicker and easier. Plugins in KeyCAD are super easy to install, and all you have to do is open the plugin and content manager and search for them. However, for one of the libraries we're going to use, we need to add another plugin repository, which can be done by clicking the Manage button next to the plugin repository dropdown and adding the eBastler KeyCAD library by pasting in the following URL. There are a total of two plugins and one library that you'll need to add. First, select the eBastler repo we just added and install the marbastlib library. This library contains several high quality footprints for various switches that are commonly used in mechanical keyboards. With that added, switch back to the official KeyCAD repo and install the Keyboard Footprints Placer and PCBWay plugins. The former will help us align our switches to the keyboard layout we designed earlier, and the PCBWay plugin is the fastest and easiest way to package your design up to order. With both plugins and the new library added, click Apply Pending Changes and close the Plugin Manager window. Next, on my GitHub account, I have a repository of KeyCAD projects that I've developed based off Noah Kaiser's STM32 template. You don't have to use either of these templates and you don't have to use this microcontroller, but frankly, it's pretty powerful and a lot of boilerplate stuff is already wired up for you. So for this project, I'm gonna go to my GitHub and download the repository, then copy the standard template into a more convenient location before renaming each of the files to whatever I wanna call my project. Then I'll open up the project file, which already has a schematic and a PCB file. I'll go ahead and open the schematic so we can add all our switches and diodes. I like to create a new sheet by pressing S and naming it Matrix. Double click the new sheet to enter it and then press A to add a new symbol. For this keyboard, I used Cherry MX soldered on switches, which as the name suggests, get soldered onto the PCB as opposed to hot swap switches, which click into a socket and can be removed at any time. Place the type of switch you want into the sheet and press A again to add a diode, which is represented simply with a capital D. Rotate the diode by pressing R until it's pointing down and connect it to the bottom terminal of the switch. So referencing the layout you designed earlier, copy and paste the switch diode combo until you have all your keys accounted for. It might be helpful to try to mirror your layout and your schematics, so if you have a space between two keys, leave a space in the schematic. This helps visually, but it can also help the plugin we're gonna use in the next step too. Once you've got all your switches in place, click the Annotate Schematic button at the top, sort the symbols by their Y position, and click Annotate. This will go through and rename all the switches incrementally from the top to bottom, which will help us out later on. The last thing to do here is wire everything up, which luckily is pretty easy. So if you copied how I aligned everything, all your column pins should line up and the bottom of all your diodes should line up to make your row. So all you need to do is press W to create a new wire and drag from top to bottom and one side to the other. It might not be that simple if your keyboard is a funky shape, but for the most part, it's not that bad. 
Next, we need to label all our rows and columns so we can tie them to pins on our MCU. To do that, click Place, Add Global Label, and name it Column 0. Then copy paste that global label for each of your columns and rename them, incrementing as you go from left to right. Make sure not to skip column 9 like I did here. Repeat that process for the row labels incrementing from top to bottom, and then copy all your new labels and paste them back in your main sheet. Before we connect the rows and columns to our MCU, and before we start working on the PCB, we need to tell the schematic what footprint to use with each symbol. Most of the symbols in this template should have footprints assigned to them, but you'll need to update all the diodes you added to your matrix. You may need to update those footprints as well. You can see which symbols need a footprint by clicking on the Assign Footprints button in the top toolbar and finding any highlighted with a poopy green, brownish, poopy, not good color. Shift select all the diodes together and search for SOD-123, then double click it to assign that footprint to all the selected symbols. Now your matrix should be all wired up KeyCAD knows what footprint to show for each symbol, and you're ready to start routing out your PCB. You can do that by clicking the Switch to PCB Editor button in the top toolbar, which will open a new window. I've gone ahead and routed some of the PCB components already, but really just to serve as an example. The orientation and layout might not work for your keyboard, so feel free to move things around as needed. Click the Update from Schematic button at the top and select Update PCB to pull in all the latest changes from your schematic. For this next part, we're going to need the keyboard layout you designed in step one. So go back to KLE and download the JSON file for the layout you want to replicate. Next, select everything in the PCB and move it out of the way before clicking the KB Placer plugin at the top of the screen. Depending on the switches you chose, this process may vary a bit, so play around with the settings. But for reference, generally I put the switches on the bottom layer and try to orient the diode so it's sitting between two of the switch's mounting posts, just low enough so the row trace can connect straight from one diode to the next. Another tip here is to leave the route with switches and route rows and columns checkboxes unchecked until you have the diode placement just the way you want it, because the plugin doesn't delete those traces if you rerun it. Once you've got everything aligned the way you want it, run the plugin one more time with those two checkboxes checked and it will place all your switches correctly and try to wire everything up. It usually does a pretty good job routing your matrix, but you may have to come back in and finish up some of the columns, which I usually do on the top layer. With the matrix routed, the last thing to do is run the traces from each column and row to a pin on your MCU. Start to plan out which pin will work best for each row or column and start routing them. Work iterative, iterative, iteratively here by going back and forth between the PCB and schematic, moving the global labels to a pin and updating your PCB to reflect the change. If you have any traces that need to cross over each other, either swap their pin assignments or use vias to route on the other layer. In the template, the MCU is on the bottom layer, so either way, all the traces need to end up there. Keep following that process until the counter at the bottom reaches zero, and then see how many mistakes you made by running the design rule checker under the inspect menu. This part can be a little bit daunting, but to start, all you really need to pay attention to is the error list. I find it helpful to zoom in on the PCB before clicking one of the errors so the window automatically jumps over to it. Work your way down the list one at a time and try not to lose hope as you watch the counter slowly tick down towards zero. Keep in mind, nobody gets it right the first time and sometimes fixing one error resolves several others. Once you've addressed all the errors, make sure the checkbox for warnings is selected and work your way through those too. Odds are you'll have even more warnings than errors, but not all of them need to be addressed. Once you've got all the routing done and you're happy with the state of the board, switch over to the edge cuts layer and draw your board outline. With the board outline done, you are finally ready to submit your board for review. Yeah, you thought you were done, didn't you? It may just be the imposter syndrome talking, but I have very little trust in myself when it comes to my own PCB designs. So tip number four is to join the Keyboard Atelier Discord. There's a channel dedicated to PCB reviews where you can post your designs and ask for a review. And honestly, I was blown away by the response. My first time posting on that server, I got several responses to my questions and the feedback I got on my design was invaluable. I didn't listen to all that feedback because I'm an idiot, but I still wouldn't have been able to do this without the help of the folks on Discord. Once you've got a plus one from the wizards on Discord, you can finally, finally order your keyboard from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. 
With the PCBWay plugin, you can order your boards with the click of a button from right inside KiCad. Simply click the PCBWay plugin button and it will automatically package up your designs and open their website in the default browser. From there, it's just a matter of selecting the options you want for your PCB. You can choose your board size, layers, color, and even different materials like copper or aluminum. For this project, I'm going with the white solder mask and black silk screen, so hopefully the boards really pop through the case. If you want PCB Way to assemble your orders for you, they may have some extra questions along the way, but more or less, you're ready to click order and your boards will show up in two to four business days, which is nuts. For this project, PCB Way was kind enough to solder one of these boards for me, so you don't have to stare at my horrendous soldering skills for too long. And as expected, they showed up looking flawless. And they don't just make PCBs either. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding, which could be perfect if you're looking to design a case for your brand new keyboard. Whether you're working on hobby projects or professional prototypes, PCB Way has you covered. So use the link in the description to get $5 off your first order. Even though PCB Way assembled one of the boards for me, I did have to solder on the switches and the OLED display, but all those are easy and even a little bit cathartic. So after a short while, my custom mechanical keyboard was done and it looks awesome. From here, all that's left to do is design the plate and case, write and flash your firmware, source your keycaps. <sighs> Did I mention how big this rabbit hole is? Don't let any of this scare you. All of it is easier than you think. And like I mentioned before, there are tons of helpful people on Discord that can help you get on the ground running. Before I let you go, I wanted to walk through some of the design issues I found and some of the mistakes I made so you can avoid them yourself. Like I mentioned, some of these were brought to my attention by the people on Discord, but at the time I didn't think they were such a big deal, so I ignored them. First, the board outline is too bulky. At the time I thought it wouldn't matter and it made it easier to route the underglow LEDs, but when it came time to design the case, that extra board size made the overall keyboard look extra bulky. I should have spent more time fitting the LEDs underneath the switches for a sleeker board, but I didn't and here we are. Another issue is that I forgot to add mounting holes on the PCB. Actually, I had mounting holes on it at one point, but somehow they got removed and I didn't notice until it was too late. This isn't a huge deal because I'm using soldered on switches, so the switches themselves will hold the PCB in place. But if I wanted to skip the case altogether for a more bare bones electronics look, it's pretty much impossible to do that without mounting holes. The next problem I have is with my layout. Initially, I thought I'd prefer to combine the numpad and the arrow keys so I could maximize the number of macro keys I had, but I forgot that I use the arrow keys and numpad all the time while programming, so that may have been a bad choice. Also, despite the crazy amount of planning and learning I did to get to this point, I can't help but wish I had made a next-gen split keyboard with low-profile chalk switches. So, basically an entirely different keyboard altogether. I literally didn't know how much I didn't know about the world of mechanical keyboards. And long story short, I will be designing another keyboard in the future to address some of these design issues. Which brings me to tip number five. If you're doing this to save money, you won't. This hobby is either for people like me who love learning new things and making cool shit, or for people that want such a high level of customization in their keyboard that they have to design it themselves. But I don't want it to sound like I'm complaining. I couldn't be happier with how this keyboard turned out. It looks great, it sounds great, and I have just a ridiculous amount of macro keys. I have the firmware for this board on my GitHub along with the PCB templates I mentioned earlier in case you want to give this project a shot yourself. I'll also have this particular PCB on PCBWay's project sharing site if you want to give it a shot. Is this keyboard perfect? No. But I love it all the same and I have learned so much through this process that I can't wait to get started on the next board. I'm planning to make several more videos around designing and manufacturing keyboards, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. I tried to cover everything in this video, but the odds are I missed something, so I'll have all the videos I used to get up to speed linked down below, and don't forget to join the Discord server either. Lastly, make sure to check out PCB Way using the link in the description to get $5 off your first order. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.